Okay, so it is time for our, our panel. Um, and we're joined by um, Mark Richardson, formerly of the AM Show. Mark, g'day, mate. Nice to see you. Yeah, g'day, mate. How are you doing? Good, mate. Nice to see you. Investment advisor now. Yes, thank right. you. And Holly Bennett, yeah. uh, wonderful to see you as well. Social commentator, political commentator? Oh, lobbyist. Lobbyist. What are you lobbying for? Change. Lots of things, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, your take on the budget? Boring, beige, basic. It's what we need. Yeah, but also um, predictable. National said they'd do this and they're doing it. Yeah. That's a good thing? Yeah. There's a lot of things that they cut, which I'm not mad about. Yeah. Because you worked hard on this budget. I saw you, um, your notes come through last night. And um, I know you work hard too, Rigger, but... Um, I read them. Did you I see read, those I notes? Read, I read Holly's <laughs> notes. She did a job for us. Yeah. I read her homework. Yeah. <laughs> and handed in as my own. On page 98, yeah. she said, page 98, did you get that far? You know? Yeah. And um, then it ended with, I've got to do some more reading. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> I, well, I'm in the presence of professionals here, so I thought I'd better well, bring my Mark's here too. Former, <laughs> former professional. Yeah, I'm long since retired. What do you make of it, Mark? Uh, well, the one the one thing I was looking for, which I was pleased with, and that's when the Treasury said it's not inflationary. Because mm. uh, from a point, from my own point of view, I guess, uh, in terms of helping what I do, we need to see uh, inflation coming down, uh, and then hopefully we can see interest rates coming down, and then hopefully we can get to the point where they can put a little bit of stimulus into the economy mm. and, and because uh, you know the amount the, our our debt to GDP is just is just growing and growing and growing yep. Yep. the graph says it levels off somewhat so there's two ways we uh, we, we, we need to borrow less um, or we increase our productivity and mm. I would like to see the latter really be the one driving that percentage down yeah the, the problem with the debt is um, it's not easy to get rid of no. and it's not sexy when you get rid of it you say well we're not giving you tax cuts we'll put the 14 billion into debt repayment and everyone goes Oh. But debt's debt. Debt's debt. There's no issues with debt if, if it's creating productivity. Yeah. If oh, it's, it's good debt. Yep. Yeah, in, increasing the pie. Yep. Yeah, the problem is, though, we've had um, debt that we don't know what it's done. Exactly. It's built nothing. 100%. Yeah. It's created nothing. And do you not notice such a difference in this budget versus previous ones, especially in the past six years? <laughs> everything. I notice everything different. Every, every, you know, we got so used to 80 million for X, mm. 100 million for Y, record level of spending. As we know, increasing spending doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get better outcomes. That's why I say it's a boring budget that we need because finally we've got a rain on it and we're bringing it backwards. Yeah, but yeah. man, it's going to take years to bring backwards. I, you went through and looked at some of those things that they're getting rid of. Yep. There was one thing in there and the, the expense of 195 million for those community workforce groups, whatever it was. Oh, outrageous. Talk, talk to me about this. This is. This, this is. This is. This is like when you've got so much money, you're just throwing it around and drunk with money, you know, like, isn't it? It was wild. Workforce development councils, what the... Can I swear? Yeah, yes. go. What, what the, the f- fuck do you do? <laughs> Honestly, I was $65 million per year for the next three years to do what? I'm still sitting there. I went and had a look. This is how much homework I did. I went and had a look on the Tertiary Education Commission website to try to understand what it is that they do. And they are there to advise the government to do what the government already has officials to do which is advise them on what workforce planning looks like. It's jobs for their mates. That's what it was. It was jobs for their mates, and they created, Labour was brilliant at creating well-paid committees yeah. all over the show, weren't they? Mm-hmm. So they had $180 million bucks. They were advising on what skills you need for the future, effectively. Yeah. The, the <laughs> public service cuts in terms of um, you know employment, and they've reduced it. That's fine, and it probably needed to, to happen, but... I think they still have to have a really close look at those who are still there who are in the management position. You want to go they're further. the ones you that get the money. Well, yeah. remember it was the first thing I put money aside for when I did my budget on the AMG. $10 million. I put $10 million aside to do a deep dive into actually the people in the ministries who take the money mm-hmm. from the politicians and turn it into something and create something with it. So you can get rid of all these other staff and you can make these cuts, but who are the people who are going to make an actual difference? Can it's I the tell you what they've done? the people who are at the front of those ministries. You, you, you're dead right. But can I tell you what they've done? They have actually haven't touched the side yet. I'll tell you why. In the last year, they added 7,000, effectively 7,000 people to the public service. The mm-hmm. last three months, they added something like um, 2,000, mm-hmm. just in the last couple of months before they got kicked out. So they've only got rid of the people from the last year that yeah. joined. It was that, a great move in Labour, wasn't it? It was like, <laughs> here you go. Now make yourselves really unpopular getting rid of this lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but that's why I think National's done it with ease. Do you know how many, many, many billion they've found? Six billion dollars worth of savings. Yeah, good. They need Six more. Six billion. That's half the tax cuts. Yeah, yeah. Well, we I, I read that list of things which were would have been nice to have, and there is lots of cuts in areas that I'd go, oh, that would have been nice. That would have been nice. But you're right. We all have to actually 
we were talking about this a few years back. We've got to tighten our, our belts. Yeah. Live within our means. And, and I, I know they were promoting tax cuts, which is, is national. Let's face it. It's, part, it's a cornerstone policy for national, and they needed to follow through on that. And I personally I could have done without it. But then again, I can't speak for someone who, say, another $40 in the back pocket will make a big difference. Well, when the theme has been take, 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 take from you, um, this is the first time in 14 years you've received a tax cut back. Yeah. Mm. 14 years. Yeah, yeah but, but you know who it's going to go to, though, right? Power companies, yeah. all of these highly regulated industries yeah, yeah. that at no point in this thing have been subject to any of this crisis because they are highly regulated industries. Mm. And therefore, they're just going, cool, I'm just going to increase my prices. And I know that you've got a cordero here that you should share. Well, yeah, I, I um, got my, like, I, I put money into uh, a bills account and it goes out every week. So I put money from a from an overdraft account into a bills account and that's what I pay my bills from. And unfortunately, I had a few bills that came in all at once and all of a sudden, Genesis missed out on their payment. Well, you, and you got a letter. But I would say within <laughs> seconds of them realising <laughs> they'd missed out on their payment, I got a nasty written, a strongly written email from Genesis saying, pay your bill or your direct credit gets cut off. Oh, wow. But, this, but these are the companies... <laughs> And I like that. Personally, as an investment advisor, I say that's yeah. a positive because here is a company yeah. who in times like this, you might be, and, and I'm not giving specialist advice here and to, go, and, to go and get on Genesis, yeah. but these are the types of companies that in times like this, you would channel clients towards because they are inflation-proof, because they just put their prices up, because they have to. <laughs> Thank you, Duncan. That'll help. Up. $10 from you will help. I'm just going to 10 bucks. Well, how about yeah. it? It's short of money. Yeah, well, I guess. well that'll, that'll be the new direct credit <laughs> setup fee, won't it, that I have to go through. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, th these these are the companies that are doing us no favours yeah. because they just put their prices up because they can, because we need the power. That's what I'm saying. I did that calculator, $40 a fortnight. I can guarantee you I will see none of that. Rates, power, yeah. all of these things. I'll be warmer for two hours a night. Yeah, I'll just keep the head on for another two hours. <laughs> but depending on, you're not walking through the night like you used to walk across in that bush across the road from your house and, you know, do all sorts of weird things. Well, no? That was how I meant, That's how I got rid of the... Uh, the, the fire alarm that would not <laughs> stop beeping. <laughs> um, 40 bucks a fortnight, so let's say that's that's where it tops out. Um, if you're in some of these places like Hamilton with rates increases of up to 20%, mm. it's gone. Exactly. Yeah. It's you, Your tax cut has already been spent last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all our tax cuts mm -hmm. go straight back into the economy, and that's why these cuts to things that would have been nice are so important, because mm. that's how they stop this from being in inflationary. You know how we've got this issue with Pharmac, they don't have enough money to buy enough medicines yeah. to keep us alive, and so we are very much, you know, in third place in the world when it comes to, you know, buying cancer drugs, which is a, which is a real problem, because people third die. Third place at the back? Or yeah, or? right at the back, right <laughs> at the back. You know, we are, we are really, you know, behind the scene, yeah. right? Um, National promised to fund 13 new cancer drugs. It couldn't get there, because they'd just couldn't do everything. But why is it always the cancer drugs that seem to drop off the list? You know, because people will die or people may lose their lives earlier as a result of this. Well, because when some publicly funded organisations spend over a million dollars on stupid consultants to do stupid things, which then they want to pretend didn't happen, is one of the reasons why that stuff doesn't get funded. Aren't you a consultant? Of course, but I don't get paid by the yeah. taxpayer. Yeah, right. Yeah. I live out in the private sector. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's irrespective of what happens in the budget because it doesn't affect my bottom like, line of my business. Pharmac's been given a bit more money, haven't they? But And they, yep. they trust that Pharmac will actually spend that money well. But I guess, you know, you can't... For every cancer drug you buy, there'll be another one that would be nice yeah. to have. But, but there's when we finally get that one, there'll be another yeah. one. And then be one that works a little bit better, but you can't get but it But we here. don't get any of those at the moment. It's a chase. I, I think chasing a horrible bloody disease like that is yeah. a bit of a mm. chasing your tail scenario. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but you've got to keep up at some stage. Now we're 100 drugs behind Australia. Yeah, you you've got to you got to keep doing it, though. You yeah. can't just stop just because it's hard. So $14 right? billion, so $14 billion of yeah. tax cuts. Um, the Pharmax um, drug um, budget is about a billion dollars. So $14 billion of tax cuts would, would um, take the Pharmax budget 14 times bigger. And we're going to get 20 bucks Which each. Which it sounds like about that's where we are in terms of percentages below Australia, isn't it? Uh, yeah, when you look at it, yeah. per head of population, uh, Pharmax is is underfunded in comparison to our neighbours. Big time, yeah. So, but what I'm saying is um, tax cuts are a huge bill, but it doesn't go that far, mm. you know? Can I just point on one thing then? Go. If we're going in that direction, yeah. that would have been nice to see, which is some way in which businesses can help themselves. Because I've seen the finance minister talk about increasing the rate of which you can depreciate assets. And I was hopeful to see that in this, government, in this budget, and I didn't see it. Maybe it's somewhere, maybe it might be coming, but... If they did a way a quicker rate of depreciation assets, I can tell you right now, mm -hmm. in the next quarter, I'd make significant investment in my business. So why? How is that going to work for you? 
So I need to get vehicles. Yep. And if you can buy it outright and then depreciate the asset, which means that I can claim it straight away. Yes. Cool. I'm going to spend the cash because I know I can claim it on my P&L and then it's there. But well, they want the cash. They want the money. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, but you have to promise a trade-off that your business then, because you can buy those things, become more profitable and therefore you end up that there is a little bit for the government. Yeah. They're getting more money off you because you're doing better as a business. That's, that's what I mean. And that's what yeah. we should be looking at rather than this idea of like, 80 million, 100 million. If you can do things like that, you can try to push yeah. the policy in a different direction and get I, different outcomes. And you're talking, right? I actually did a little bit of homework other than your <laughs> your thesis. Um, and I, I read Joseph Bagani's work this morning, actually. Oh, yep. And the, the best sentence she made and the best point she made was right at the end. She was making that point the whole way that uh, she would like to see a budget that really actually invests in things like what you are talking about. Mm. Um, that actually allow businesses to increase their productivity. Yeah. We, we need so, to, we need to so the budget spends to improve the economy. Yes. Correct. So we need to cut the business tax rate. Like if oh, you, yes, please. Yeah, no, but if you look at you, you look around the world, we're now no longer competitive. For the first time in my life, that I'm I'm an employee, Duncan. <laughs> yes, yes, you've become quite sensible, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really sensible. Yeah. Um, but no, seriously though, we need to we need to be. Um, so if we're going to be productive. Mm more productive than we are at the moment and be competitive, then why aren't we cutting the business tax rate? I think National will do it at some stage. Yeah, I hope they do. But they but they, they haven't before. Yeah, well, yeah. they're shaking in their boots right now. They've got to think about what's going to happen next budget. Next one. Lobbyists well, not much, like myself. Not much, because there's not much money around. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's not, though. I mean, if you look at the operating allowances that um, Nicola Willis had left herself at $2, mm. $2 billion, I mean, that's nothing. No, I know. That's nothing for any new project. So this is basically going to stay like this for the next three years. Mm. Well, this feels to me that we are in the rainy day and we're going to stay in the house. We're not going to go out. We're not going to go to the movies. We're not going to spend this. We're not going to spend that. Next year, we're going to hope that we're in a situation whereby inflation has come right back and stimulate the economy, and then we will start to actually see the productivity growth and therefore what comes with so that another is, year of this, is more money so, into the coffers. So, so another year of, just, of, of gr gritting it out. Yeah, I, I think we have to, and that's why I've been a little bit disappointed with the, oh, well, that's not much money, or that's not much money. That's It's because I think we're, we're meant to be a team, aren't we? Yeah. And and it's not, oh, it's not for us to just go, <laughs> this team help me out. I, I want this. I want this. I want this. Mm. You need to help me out more please, more please. I think w we all have to realise that these are tough times. Yeah, but it's a fundamental misunderstanding of the things that government and state should do because what you're talking about there is everyone believes it's the money that does the thing. To me, it's the policy that well, does the What's the playing field? Thing. They've yeah. got to set a playing field that we go out Conditions. and play and, and play and better. And we got so used to it being the money mm. and everyone ignores the policy. But money, well, that's, money that's doesn't matter. Point. We're yeah. To, yeah, we're, that's my point. Yeah. We're going like, give us more money, give us yeah. more money, that'll fix our exactly. problems. No, we'll create an environment where you can go out and work as hard as you like, hundred percent, and and you will get ahead. That's what that's the country you want to work. I in. agree. Yeah, but well, see, we had we had six years of announcements and money, and, and, <laughs> and you tell me if mental health was fixed after that one point nine billion, where no. was the fix? Because it's not there. Right. You know. Um, also today, um, there's been some quite um, aggressive reaction to the budget. The Māori Party saying they want to go out there and have their own uh, parliament. Mm -hmm. They wish to set up their own parliament. So this is constitutional sort of, you know, um, flip-flopping, basically. They leave the New Zealand parliament. This is a, a, few, a wider discussion about our constitution. And also, this morning, uh, the reaction from um, the co-leader's uh, wife has been that they need to overthrow the government. Overthrow the government? Is this Fiji? You know? it's, it's, I mean, it's a lot of hot air, but first, they've got, they've got a voice. Uh, and I think, you know, they've got an opportunity to, to make a difference, those leaders who are in there right now. And I think they can probably do more with that voice. They can be more productive with that voice. They can channel that voice in the right direction because it's not going to happen. It is a pie dream. It's it's a pipe dream. It's yeah. not going to happen. So what's the devil you know? It's the one they're and, in right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and get get better at, at representing your, your people. Well, voice, I'm, I'm speaking a from yeah. a, a very different perspective. Yep. But I, I've always thought, you know, you, you, there's things you'd like to have, but you'll probably never get them so better. Do the best you can with what you've got. This is, to me, this is a marketing and membership drive from the Māori Party to Party Māori. It's actually very smart. What they've gone out there, they've realised that this government said a few things that are anti-Māori or whatever, so they've jumped on it and they're using it to market themselves and their party. I mean... I, I think, though, it's problematic when parties use their voice to scare their own people because that is a succession yeah. of what I have seen to Party Māori doing now for like a very long time and especially in the past eight to nine months. And that is something that concerns me, especially as someone with Whakapapa Māori, is because what you're essentially saying is this idea of we long as Māori sort of 
fought against segregation. We said, no, we want to be part of the society. Mm, you cannot yeah. turn us away, like my great uncle who got turned away from Papakura uh, Hotel having a drink, right, while he was also the head of the psychiatric university department of what uh, I can't remember which university, Waikato, I think. And he got turned away because he was Māori, right? Now they're going in a backwards direction and saying, oh, we would like segregation again. We would like our own parliament. What does this achieve? You're then telling us that there's going to uh, once again be a two-tier system, that we're not good enough to do politics in the way that parliament has. And that's why when I look at that Tamatatini announcement, one of the things that... Winston, $47 billion yes, for the Tamatatini. Tamatatini. One of the things that Winston said in his speech was uh, about Shaggy and it wasn't me. And if you think about that song, what was another line? you got to be, know how to play to be a player. And I thought that to Matatini announcement has Shane Jones all over yeah. it. He's playing <laughs> politics yeah. right back. Yeah, but, 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 what, what, but if this government's anti-Māori, then they've given money to secure the Kabahaka National Championships, that's what it is for people that don't know, for a long time. Yeah, They have secured the Kabahaka, yeah, which, is the, which is the big sort of standalone event, this government said we back it. That's what I'm saying. So, so what? What's anti Maori about that? Well, it's not. And then so exactly. We, but then we go to this idea of what you're talking about with the party Maori. They're just they're just playing politics with exactly. their own people, and I yeah. hate that because. Well, I I stood. I, I was at the Commercial Bay actually having lunch, and the protest came yeah, down. Commercial Bay having lunch. The protest was in trouble because I was I was on the other side of the road, and I, needed, I I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they all joined me afterwards for lunch as well after the protest. Um, and and I just I, I did it did you know I thought okay if I was oh, to ask five no, if, oh, you can't, yeah. um, if oh. I was to go and you know into the middle of that group and, and ask someone okay well, what are you, what are you protesting against mm. yeah well the government oh, what what, what? In specific that the government is doing they're anti Maori right, well, in in what way I don't know if I would have actually because I, I I agree with you it it's a scare factor of something that hasn't quite happened mm. and but, might not happen mm. but I tell you what Maori can do and what the party Maori can do they can mobilise hundred mm, percent. Yeah, hey? yeah. The numbers, but well, well, they were big, strong. It, was, it wasn't strong. an ugly protest too. It was, you know, they're coming down the road singing. Yeah. It was quite cool. It was, yeah. it was a good spectacle. But, but just at what though? You know, what, what are we talking about here? What's the protest about? Yeah. Um, okay, so we we know that. Um, see, what I think about the budget is it was entirely predictable, mm -hmm. and they were able to do it in these tough times. They actually did what they said they'd do. Now that's enormously powerful mm. as a political brand. I'm actually surprised because I thought they'll get ripped a new one. They're, they're, I thought, okay, well, just, you know, me being a little bit centre right here, thinking that the media's a me little bit Me being a little bit centre right here. <laughs> um, I thought, well, they're, whatever they do, they're going to get ripped a new one. Yeah. I, I don't need that, actually, yeah. Um, they, whatever they do, they're going to get ripped a new one. So far, they haven't. So yeah. far, the commentary's actually been pretty. Can I rip pretty, someone a new one? All right, you yeah. get into it. The Prime Minister? His uh, speech? speech? Oh. Woeful. What the yeah, what the, what the actual? <laughs> that was four minutes, 20 seconds. That's how much I did my homework for you guys. Four minutes and 20 seconds of that budget speech. The first speech you're doing on your budget, you spoke about the Labour Party. Yeah, I know. How dare you? Yeah. yeah. How dare you? We are talking about a cost of living crisis and you're talking about the Labour Party. What about this? To my finance minister, congratulations for holding it together. And, there's, there, and the uproar, the big uproar. Hey, you know, we've done this, and you guys tried to bury us. Yeah, you know? The gross majority of, of this country know that you, you know, you got a bit of a raw deal. That we're in a bit of a pickle. Yeah, they voted for that change. So you've had you've had your turn now to, to say, "Well, the last government, the last <gasps> government." One yeah. thing I want to see now is I don't want to hear that. You now, you now have at least two years to put things right. So, for, so yeah. forget, stop talking about the last lot. What's yeah. done is done, yep. and now start talking forwards because Agree. referring to the continuing to justify everything you do or referring to the last slot is just backwards looking. And I reckon it gets harder here. I'll tell you why it's been probably a bit easier than we think for this last 12 months for the government. There was so much low-hanging fruit. Mm. There were so many programs. There was so much bullshit that was funded that it was easy to find. Yeah. Now it gets harder to find. Yeah. Absolutely, right. and now they're, they're on the chopping block for the shit that goes wrong under their watch too because guarantee it will go wrong. Well, they've got to be responsible at some stage. You can't just say, oh, it was their fault. Mm. Labor spent nine years, oh, you know, six years saying <laughs> it was National's fault. Well, yeah. it doesn't wash up. Like, it is a renovation disaster. 
come, you know, calling upon one of my other careers. Well, well yeah, which is block. now dead. Are you right with that? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with it. I've yeah. got. Well, over you're it. an investment banker. Yeah, man. yeah. Um, you know, it is a renovation disaster, and it's going to take a while to strip everything back, and you're mm. going to find a bit of rot and things that weren't done well. So it is going to take some time. But at some point, you've got to focus on your rebuild. Yeah. And and, it, and, and now's the time. You've, you've got your budget out. You've had a pop at the last lot. We all know that the coffers is not much there. There's been a lot of misspending. Now, now you've stripped it back. Start building and talk about what you're going to build. Yep, I agree. Um, Holly, the last bit. Look, people are telling me here. Duncan says, "John, Holly is awesome." That means you're coming back. Oh, good. You can, good on you, John. Uh, Send more messages yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, Mark is awesome too. Yeah. Well, I love perhaps, Mark. Perhaps, John, I should swear more then. <laughs> when you're over. Yeah, uh, doesn't suit you. Um, your last word. What's my last word? Yeah, what do you want to say? Well done, Nicola. You've held you've held that together mm. in a way that uh, exemplifies what I want to see from more budgets going forward. So yeah. good on you. Good on you. Thank you for coming. Nice to meet you as well. Nice to see you. Lovely You'll be back, you. Mark. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Can I have a last word? Yeah, go. I, I want to take, you know, Jacinda Ardern's great motto, wasn't it? Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to say, can I change it to let's just bloody get on with it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's, that's, yep. Let's get, get, get on with it, mate. Yeah, get so, on with it, mate. Yeah, nice. Your podcast. Yes. What is it? Three girls, one beehive. It's very good, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so where, where, where do we find that? Rover. Oh, and wherever you get your good podcast. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Nice to see you guys. Yeah, and I'm wherever you get good investment advice. <laughs> yeah. <also> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did I get my five bucks back? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for um, coming in. You've been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Editor in chief, live with Duncan Garner.